Some wider air coolers block a full 25mm fan from fitting over motherboards with higher CPU socket placement in the Cooler Master NR200. So today we'll turn our attention to slim 120mm fans. There are some hacks that I've seen to mount them up. Most involve purchasing some type of hardware, but dude, Cooler Master already includes everything you need to mount them. So let's take a look. I'll show you a couple options. Hey there, welcome back to Machines and More, also known as the NR200 channel, as some of you have jokingly referred to it as. I'll give you guys that. The, the popularity of this case has definitely been a big part of the channel growth here. And while there are some really fantastic SFF cases in the review pipeline here, it seems like I can still find something great and neat about this case to share with everyone. So recently we did a full build tutorial on this channel and the cooler that I chose to do um, this build with was the Scythe Mugen 5 uh, because it fits well with the tempered glass panel. Now I chose it uh, because it's very straightforward for new builders and as far as I can tell, fit is pretty reliable. You're not gonna run into too many compatibility issues with that tempered glass panel. Uh, thermals are also very fine for a Ryzen 5 chip that's in this case. Uh, the one downside to the setup, at least with my sample, was that the cooler was too tall to fit a 25 millimeter fan, or I guess too tall in this case, but some would say it's too wide. I did try to bend the fan clips in an attempt to fit it, and I know some of you were successful with this, but my case would not close without this area, this top just bulging out, and that put a lot of pressure on the cooler. So I didn't feel comfortable recommending that, especially to first time builders, especially I wouldn't run it myself like that. So. You might want to try this uh, mod also if you're using a larger SFXL power supply and you can't get that full fan compatibility at the top. So what I did was I sat down and I played around and came up with a few solutions. Uh, the first one is kind of playing on this toolless idea. So what I did was I rummaged around my workshop and came up with a solution with the toolless grommets that uh, Cooler Master provides. So inside this bag, you get these for mounting the SSD, and there's there's more than enough if you want to run a couple of drives, but you can also spare four of them. Of course, since this is a mod, make sure you study it carefully and do it at your own risk, because while it worked for me, I'm not going to guarantee that it will work for you reliably, although I think it's a pretty good option. Uh, you'll need, for the first one, uh, you'll need four of these one inch uh, number eight machine screws. Now the threads don't really matter that much. We're basically trying to imitate the diameter on the stock mounting hardware and actually exceed it a little bit. And the thread on the screws will also help us provide a little extra bite. This is a pretty common size, so you might just have some lying around from other products that you've bought and never got around to use. So for the first method, I'll show you this with the Noctua NFA 12 by 15, which is the best slim fan that I can think of. And for any slim fan, I would still try to use the grill since there are just a lot of cables that run uh, near the top of the case. You will just unscrew the toolless mounting hardware and take the grill off. And I would also recommend a few rubber washers between the grill and the fan. If you don't want to spend too much time on it, a couple of these little HDD washers will do, or you can patiently, like I did, uh, just push four of these extra toolless rubber grommets through the grill holes. This, this, these are the ones that are used for mounting the SSD and also the, the fan on the top. And they will fit through the holes if you slowly work at it, right? And then what I'll do is I'll just put this on top and then I'll just take these screws and push it through. Uh, you can screw it through. Just take a little time. That's it. To me, it feels fairly secure. Although you do have to be careful if you do remove it, um, there's a possibility that the screws will fall out. I actually think it'll stay relatively um, close to the fan because you've got these grommets here too holding it tight. So that you can still pull out, but you can also push it back in and just give it a couple turns. We're actually not using the screws. It's actually not screwed down. It's just gripping enough so that it stays in place. All right. So that's the first one. 
So now this next one is my preferred method because it's a little more permanent. And this is the one where Cooler Master pretty much has already given you all the hardware. Along with these rubber grommets, you get a lot of these little zip ties, which are perfect. And hopefully you didn't need all of them for your build because they definitely give you more than you need. Just take out the grommets from the top. And I've already done three of these to uh, do, give you an idea of how this might work. And you'll just thread this zip tie through one of the honeycomb holes. We'll use a set of tweezers to kind of pull the zip tie out a little bit. Thread this through the rubber grommet and just pop it back in. And you probably see the idea already at this point, right? You're just gonna use the zip ties to hold it down. As simple as that. It's pretty secure, easy to take off if you need to, just cut off the zip ties. Um, this one here is an RGB option that I found. Um, I was wondering which one to recommend, and just so happens that uh, ID Cooling sent by these slim RGB fans for another build project, and I thought I would check them out. So we'll just cinch these up. You don't need to ham fist every single one of these. You can kind of pull the end of the zip tie to the side so it doesn't stick out. And there you go, that's not gonna fall out. And the rubber grommets will serve as a little bit of an anti-vibration, also space off the grill enough from the fan blade so it won't interfere with the spinning. So simple as that. Um, it's secure, but it's easy to take off and you don't need to buy any hardware. So this is the one, I put it in the case to show you. This is the RGBs, the Slim ID Cooling, whatever that model name is. Um, and I and they work pretty well. So far, so good. The lighting in this single color doesn't look as, uh, doesn't match up as nicely with the other Cooler Master fans. It's not the end of the world. Um, if you did want something more colorful like Digital Wave, it, um, it does blend in a little bit better, but you know, I'm not a huge RGB fan, but I, I do um, enjoy having some lighting in the case just so you can see what's going on inside. And I'll leave this fan and the Noctua fan and the Scythe Kaze Flex fan linked down below so you can reference that if you'd like. If you've seen the optimizations video for the NR200P, you'll recall that the recommendation is four fans in a chimney style airflow from bottom to top. And while that is absolutely the best way, if mounting a slim fan is too much trouble for you, it's not the end of the world. And some new builders may choose to forego it entirely because of the way that the 30 series founders cards exhaust and because there's more open area for airflow. The fan adjacent to the power supply does all of the heavy lifting. And just to kind of illustrate the benefit that you might see when running that extra slim fan, um, this one here, I did a CPU only render in Blender. Just uh, for sure, two fans yields the best CPU thermals with the Mugen 5 and the tempered glass panel. Now it's a bit worse than with the vented panel, but for sure still very usable. For Unigen Heaven, Instead of locking the CPU clocks, I just ran it on PBO like most gaming users might be doing. Um, CPU temps are not really meaningful here because the CPU clocks are not locked down. But if you look at this GPU temps, the bulk of the work is being done by the fan over the PSU. So while I would recommend having both fans up top, you might decide it's not worth the trouble. And that might be okay too if your CPU isn't hugely powerful. Now, personally, I would go with the Noctua Slim fans and uh, or the Scythe Kaze Flex, but this RGB fan seems to work just fine too. I am working through a post build video just to show you some setup tips, um, setting up the fan curves, under volting, performance metrics, things like that, just to make sure that you get the most out of your system out of the box, especially if you're a first time builder. So make sure you subscribe to get updates on the new content. Thanks a lot for watching today and I'll see you in the next video.